What's up YouTube, it's Jonathan from ASX Options. Today we're going to be talking about the Black Shoals implementation in Excel. So first off the intuition. Here is a graph of a random stock price that's at $30. I want you to picture that we're going to have dispersion okay, in that stock price, different possible outcomes and that those possible outcomes are going to follow this normal distribution in log returns. So, keeping that in mind, we're going to now apply the Black-Scholes formula and implement that in Excel. So let's begin. So first off, we're going to define the interest rate and this is going to be constant percentage. So let's just say 1% and up in the left hand corner here, we're going to have to define what that is. So let's just call it the rate. This is going to make it easier to calculate later. So the next is going to be the underlying price. Let's call that S. So that's $30 and define that as S above. Now the strike K and let's just say $40. $40. And let's define that as K. Next, we're going to say T as the time to expiry. Now, this is defined in years, so to make it easy for us to implement, we're going to assume that it's 240 days to expiry. And then we're just going to divide those amount of days by 365. And let's call that years and define it as T. So now the one last thing we need to find is volatility. So for this, I'm going to go find the sigma. Excellent. That's a symbol and it's annualized volatility as a percentage. So let's just assume that it's 30%. Excellent, and define that as sigma. So now let's talk about the steps in our calculation. So we have to calculate what these parameters D1 and D2 are. And then we're going to calculate those under the normal distribution standard normal distribution. So then we're going to calculate what the call price and the put price is. So first with D1, we're going to take the natural log of S divided by K plus by the rate plus sigma squared. Don't forget to put that in brackets and divide that by 2 and bracket and bracket and divide the whole thing by the volatility sigma times by the square root of time. So just checking that that aligns up with our formula. Yep, looks good. Enter. Now let's define D2. Now D2 is pretty easy because we just have to take D1 and then subtract the annualized volatility times by the square root of time. Excellent. So just checking that again, the formula above, yep, natural logarithm of s divided by k plus the rate plus sigma squared divided by 2 multiplied by time. Okay, now the normal distribution with the mean of 0 with a standard deviation of 1 and we're going to take the cumulative distribution so you have to type true and we're going to do the same thing for d2 So 0, 1, and true. Excellent. So now onto the call price. 
it's just going to be equal to the stock price now times by ND1 and then we're going to subtract the strike price and the discount rate so just the exponential of minus rate times time so that's discounting the strike back and we're multiplying it by ND2 now for the put price K times by the discount rate now we're going to need to calculate what the normal distribution is for negative D1 and negative D2 so let's do that for the put option now just keep in mind we're going to be taking the opposite side of the normal distribution now so norm dist function and let's do d1 first so minus d1 this time and 0 1 and true minus d2 0 1 and true excellent so now applying those factors let's multiply through by the normal distribution of minus 2 d2 and then multiply by the strike with an normal distribution of minus d1 excellent so now we've priced the call and the put so let's just think about it intuitively for a second so the call price is much less than the put now what's the reason for that let's go over to our graph so right now our stock price is thirty dollars and we've set the strike at forty so looking at that um, normal distribution of returns there we can see that there are going to be less outcomes that reach above the $40 strike therefore the call is worth less money whereas the put has all of that value intrinsic value between $40 and $30 so just reiterating so that's $10.25 because of all the intrinsic value and again that's the difference between 40 and 30 dollars whereas here the call price just had the time value now the graph doesn't perfectly represent this example because I used a different value for volatility when producing that graph but the same concept applies so we call the put in the money and the call out of the money at the moment so thank you very much for listening if you like the video, please go ahead and subscribe. Okay, have a great day.